Okay, so um, another update on the TFMSX. Um, I realized that I put the joystick port in upside down. Uh, just stupid pin out of um, the standard um, eagle issue. I'm back on. We have now got MSX2 working. So we're now in MSX2. We have MSX2 ROMs working. Hopefully that'll work. I am getting like a little bit of a little bit of an issue with this um, PDP. It's not mad on this board, but I think it might be we might be a little bit out on capacitance on some of the capacitors. And I may need to go and check them check them all out. But yeah, it's um, it's all all working. Um, the sound is up and working again. Um, um, I think if I can kind of remember from the last one, um, yeah, the joystick wasn't working. There was a few glitches. Pretty much got them all sorted out. So it kind of does that, and then it's kind of happy after a little while. And then keyboard, and then. So this is an MSX2 game, Vampire Killer. Gameplay kind of works, kind of works well. I can use, and I can also use the the joystick probably. All working nicely. Um, what can I say? It's 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 working nicely. All the games I have that I can try here are working. Um, Night Night Kings Valley Monkey Academy Nightmare. Let's try one I haven't tried recently. Like again, yeah, Night. Uh, Kings Valley is an MSX one game, I believe. So just get that, that, and then it sinks. Not sure what's going on there. If anybody has any idea what's going on there, please leave something in the comments. Ah, there we go. Something didn't work. Maybe the contacts on that were not so happy. Kings Valley. Give it a wiggle in the socket. No, she's not happy this one. Ah, oh, there's a lot, I can feel there's a lot of flux on that one. I'll try Monkey Academy. Not sure what's going on there. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Um, so that that kind of kind of works. Um, the other one that's a uh, other sort of use case test case is these um, these cartridges that have got in them the SCC chip. Just checking that that works. So again, not that it, it's it's kind of settles down after. It's almost like it's the wrong frequency gets changed or something. Yeah, so these games are all working, it's it's kind of, they're all playable, they all work. Um, I'll just turn the volume on that down a little bit. So, um, what's what's left to do? Um, to be honest, this just needs to be respun, and I need to find a figure out. Um, every, every now and again, this the VDP crops out, and I've got two boards built. I've got this one built for someone who's going to do some testing for me, um, <clears throat> but I don't have a... I don't have any of these cartridge slots left. I only ever had two. I gave one to Arik who did the firmware for the um, for the um, the STM32. So I mean, this one has got um, 
uh, V9938 on it, and it's got 128 meg of RAM, uh, 120k of RAM, um, VRAM, and then 512k of um, normal RAM. The 512k is recognized in the MSX2 mode. Um, um, the ROMs, I have to, I've run out of one time programmable ROMs, so I can't. Uh, I've been kind of like using the bottom half of a ROM and then using the top half for the second test when I, when I realized I'd done it wrong or I wanted to try a different ROM. So, um, yeah, these those ROMs are actually the ones I'm actually using have become un unobtainable, but I have found another source and hopefully I'll get a couple of uh, 10 of them in the next day. So, yeah, I've had to solder the joystick port on upside down. I will respin that one for the next revision. I think um, one of the lads on the Exos forum suggested putting some mount holes in the corners um, or s just put some mount holes on it so that it could be put into a case of some sort. It's very tiny. Um, with the USB it's really nice. The The only issue I foresee with this whole project uh, for anyone looking to build one is that the um, the STM thirty twos are becoming really difficult to get. Um, they're being they have they're basically used in automotive applications, and they're they're basically massively sought after for new cars at the moment. And unfortunately, that used to work for us because they were really cheap. They were like three three four three four dollars or whatever. But now <laughs> they're like twenty five. I think if you can find them, um, but. As an overall package, I think, you know, you're talking, um, I think probably the board plus all the components on it pre-assembled with the RAM. The RAM came pre-assembled. The, the idea with this was that all the surface mount gear would be pre-assembled and then they would leave, you know, your, I don't want to be derogatory about it, but the, like your lower end, the lower end of the soldering skills would be required with a through hole for... For, for doing the rest of the job and, and finishing it off. So that um, that's that's kind of so. The, the, the boards actually come something like, looking something like this. And the idea is, um, I would have put the, the CPLD on there as well, and the arm, that they were options to be pre-assembled, but um, for a prototype run, for, this, for a second prototype run, we were talking. I think it was going to add um, another hundred pounds to the to the order of five to put those chips on, uh, and I didn't need them because I had them already here. I, you know, I had them on the previous prototypes, and I, you know, I've got these a big uh, um, Xilinx CPLDs coming out of my ears because I use them in everything. So, <clears throat> and the arms uh, were really really expensive. So, yeah. Um, it shouldn't. I mean, it shouldn't be difficult to build. It might be a little bit expensive, but the idea is, hopefully, you know, we can identify the things that are expensive and just gently, gently reduce, you know, the amount of complex, um, the amount of them that we need, um, and try and make this, you know, keep cost reducing this. Um, yeah, um, the VDPs weren't too bad. The These are pretty easy to get on eBay. Those you can get new from Z, um, RS. That's the Z80. Um, these D, um, DRAM chips, these um, four bit DRAM chips were pretty easy to get hold of as well. The only difficult chip to get was this. I've got these, I've already got these in stock. So I don't know, I actually don't know how difficult these are to get. These are, I've been putting in the XC288s um, XC95288s, but I think I could probably reduce the number of gates I need to get it into a 144. Although well, there's not that big a difference in price in them these days. Um, Amstrad CPC plus cable because it was the cheapest. I mean, the whole idea was just to make this the cheapest real MSX without using an FPGA. And you know, all of the glue logic has been condensed into that um oh yeah and then the i was seeing slight slight glitches writing text with this and i realized i had to put the m1 weight cycle in which i did as well in the last since the last video um and i think i've got everything um in there that i need now um it should be i, I i've done a small implement uh, emulation of the real-time clock it doesn't store the time and but the the the, the msx2 bios needed 
um, to be able to read and write the BIOS settings, the sort of CMOS settings inside the RTC chip. So I've kind of simulated a little bit of that in here. I've just gone down to the bare minimum needed for it to boot. Um, obviously there's no backup battery, so you lose the settings next time around. Um, I don't know how big a deal that is to people. I, I envisage this would be a very simple MSX portable. <coughs> That's very true to the original MSX. No emulation issues. All the games would play and it would be um, easy to easy for people to make that that's the goal of of the terrible fire stuff so easy for people to make so uh, that's the update it's all working generally um, if I kind of give you a, that's the update on the MSX um, I've got a small update for for a gadget um, elsewhere in the lab um, piles of crap here um, Back, we'll be back to doing um, TF4060 stuff soon. Um, my flight instruction course didn't work out. Um, I went along to, to Goodwood to do my flight instruction course and it just became very clear very quickly that I was too rusty to start the course and complete it in seven weeks. So I'm not, I, I, we've, we've, we've knocked it on the head and I'm back home. So I'm working. So yesterday I spent, yesterday I picked up this monitor while I was away from a, a, a great lad in, in Bristol. And this is the uh, SNK uh, MVS system that Gadget UK bought and fixed and sent me. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, this, uh, so I wired it all up. Hope I won't touch the, but it's, it's mains wired up. Wired it up like this, and this is the Xeno Crisis um, cartridge that the lads at the Bitmap Bureau sent me as a thank you for telling them to try the setting in. Um, in Xilinx land because they were having issues with it. Uh, it was, I think they were, they were using Keeper on the, you know, on the termination instead of float and that caused, or was it, I can't remember if it was Keeper or, it was one way around and they tried it the other way and everything worked. Um, it just, the, the symptoms they were having sounded very like the original symptoms we were having with the TF536. So I suggested that. I think I may have already had a few libations at the point which Chris asked me that on What's up? They tried it and it all worked. Uh, that's the summary version. I think there's probably more to it than that. But look at the screen. This is a 25 inch uh, Hunter X Polo. And it's going to go in a new caravan building. Um, custom built a cab for, for this whole system. So I've designed that cab in Fusion 360 and I'm going to get the sides of the front and the, you know, the, more, the most um, difficult to do parts done in uh, from a CNC shop locally and then we'll assemble it in the garage and I'll maybe take you through some videos of that but yeah just wanted to get this up and running and show gadget that it was up and running so so that's that um, yeah so that's the, the arcade side of things um, these bad boys have been taken away from the um, the garage they're not allowed in the garage at the moment um, this is my son's multi-cade this is an Operation Wolf that's had a, a little, um, it, the, this isn't working but I fixed the board otherwise. Then. And this guy is actually working perfectly, it's just needs a bit of cosmetic love. I need to somehow repro the control panel um, vinyl, I think, and maybe even, maybe I won't bother with that. Uh, there is quite a bit of screen burn as you can see, and uh, the top lights are not working. Uh, just just some sort of cosmetics on it and uh, that's that those those two cabs are working fine this is my next cab project um let's see uh, so the 4060 i mentioned and then sort of next really serious piece of work is to discover why the tf 360 is not so happy so it is actually the it is actually the one on the bench at the moment. Is it COM10? Don't think so. There's a there's a COM port. Let me bring up OBS. There we go. So yeah, we're we're in. That's it. Booting at 75 megahertz into diagram. So I've got some work to do on that. And that's my focus, my next focus after all this, but uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, 
back to this this is the um, this is what I've been working on I'm gonna post one of these out on Monday or Tuesday to, to someone for some testing Eric has confirmed he has it working too um, I think I'd like to try and understand what's going on with the video I think it might be a capacitor needed changed or some pin might need cut or I don't know just trying to investigate what's going on there so if you've seen the symptoms before on an MSX let me know in the comments but that's really everything left to do it, and there you go I tried it this time and it works fine um, it might be temperature dependent you know it is a bit sensitive to, to, to putting your finger on things around here uh, yeah, if, if, it, if I put my finger there, kind of it kind of sets it off and then gets it back. Ah, oh, there we go. And then you can kind of sometimes it does that, but that seems to be a sort of heat thing. So I think I may be needing just a little bit of um, an extra bit of capacitance somewhere. I'd like to figure that out before I do the final run, the final version. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Uh, take care and have a good one.